access, there must be a huge and significant impact in terms of road construction. If you go to uh, 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 mobile local government, what is there? If you go to Abadan local government, there's no road beyond Gudumbali, uh, Damasa, uh, Gudumbali, uh, Kroskawa. There's no other road going to the north, going to uh, Abadan, going to Manapaturi. But how do you have governance if there's no road? So, so we think that a lot of things need to be done. It's not, that's, not, that's not a job for Operation Lafayette Adule, but I know that um, um, a lot of actions are being put in place to ensure that massive reconstruction uh, is, is undertaken. The same goes for Alagano Forest. The, why can't we have a link between uh, Benishek and, uh, and, uh, and Kumala? Why can't we have a link between uh, Minor, for example, to, uh, to Dewa? Of course, across, so that you be able to have a thorough access. The same goes from, from Dewa into the heart of Sambisa. And if possible, to uh, Polka, it's possible. These are things that can be done. We, on our own, we are moving forward. We are believing we, we, we do some engagement to construct a route that we aid our operations. Once that aids our operations, we believe that from there, other agencies, other, other stakeholders should, should take it from there. I hope that, um, that answers your question. The military business uh, that the IGP talked about, um, you know, of course, um, there was a report, and I think I, I, want to, I want to reserve making any comment on that, since there's, there is uh, an investigation which the IGP is uh, making. He's been mandated by Mr. Mr. President to do so, and based on his findings so far, he went to the press. So, but I want to, if you don't mind, um, I wouldn't want to say a word on that. So perhaps uh, you could clarify from the police uh, what, what has happened. But what I can tell you is that, and I think I've told you this in the past, that when I got uh, a report of that, I went to the camp. I went to one of the, of course, Daluri camp, and I met with different groups in that camp. And of course, they also gave me their own side of the story, which was part and parcel of the investigation that the military conducted. But I think that, um, that this might not be the forum for us to give the details on that. Now, how accessible are the liberated communities? Of course, I think I've answered this in the course of talking about opening up of roads and all that. For civilian JTF, um, of course, Boko Haram terrorist lean, um, Memuna, you talked about Boko Haram terrorist lean hand on military kits. Of course, it's all part of the of the um, community engagement, the, the all stakeholders engagement. Um, this forum is one where you you see uh, people that um, that that look suspicious. Of course, you should you should, you should report them to the security agencies. The the picture that I showed you, uh, Boko Haram, who of course got um, uh, was wearing a military uniform, that didn't make him to be a soldier. Uh, so it's also going to be. You find uh, a few days, a few weeks back, there was uh, someone who was caught somewhere in uh, Abuja. Um, um, you know, Kubwa General era. What was it? He was a claim to be a, a, a major. Does that make high a major? No. There are others who have also impersonated. So you are going to find things like that um, as the days go by. Now, on the civilian uh, JTF, what uh, you know, uh, what what's in there for them? Uh, the civilian the JTF is not a creation of the military, but we value their contribution. We think that they have done well. They've done incredibly well, and. Um, Again, um, uh, even when um, the, the, the security you know, situation or the threats have ebbed, I think that it's also essential for us to have community um, um, vigilantes in our various communities because we must learn from the uh, history of the, uh, of the past history. The experience we're not having, which, of course, by God's special grace, we're bringing to an end, is something we must learn from. We have left for too long on governed spaces. And those ungoverned spaces we must begin to take uh, um, responsibility for them. And the communities are part and parcel of that engagement. I've got, um, they have responsibility to, to ensure that such things are, are handled. So for me, I see collective responsibility that I've always emphasized in terms of management of issues of um, security. Uh, I don't know whether there's anything I've left. And uh, perhaps if there's any of my colleagues who want to say one or two things in that regard. Have I left out any questions? Anybody who I have not answered his questions? Okay, do we have more time to take additional questions? Any more? Okay, please. Allah. Uh, my name is uh, Timothy. Uh, most Nigerians, when the military says that uh, this operation, uh, the counter insurgency operation, we had a particular period, and that uh, the head is aside for Boko Haram, 
most Nigerians, you know, read that to mean you are not going to hear of uh, Heidi explosions and uh, you are not going to hear anything about Boko Haram again. The complete normalcy uh, will, try, will prevail. And so we want you to explain in what time do you mean when you say uh, the hand is aside from the court and does that mean that we're not going to hear of ID, we're not going to hear of any violation of a uh, security situation? All right, thank you. Um, beautiful question, no doubt. And inside is is um, to say that the, the impunity, the effrontery that Boko Haram and its leadership have had and displayed is in sight. The end of it is in sight. Now, that the Boko Haram ends, that, that everything that has to do with Boko Haram leadership, they are all taken out and they, they turn a new leaf. Is that going to take away um, um, security issues? No, it's not going to be. Any, there's no part of the world where you have... Um, um, 400% security. There are others, and I think that in our earlier engagement, I did, you know, told us that there are those who have also uh, take, who are taking advantage of this uh, state of insecurity to now uh, carve out a new uh, a new channel of, uh, of 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 survival for themselves. And I think post uh, insurgency that is going to continue. Just the same way we experienced armed robbery after the civil war. For those of you who were uh, we were born then. I was. Uh, I know that uh, you were born, <laughs> but uh, I do not think Timothy witnessed the civil war. Now, now for, for you know, after the Nigerian civil war, we saw a rise in in armed robbery. Why? People now saw the force of arms as a means to an end. So, in these two, you are likely to find it. IEDs, whether there is going to know, there are others that have been laid. That is the reason why. There are measures. If you go to uh, DRC, you go to other places where wars were fought in the past and they have ended, you still find issues of USOs, that is unexploded ordinances, as well as issues of IED. So they will always exist. Even in this operation too, you will find some unexploded ordinances that which will generate, will give rise to some form of actions. We call it developmental operations, which of course will be part of reconstruction, having to clear mines, having to clear that way. But it's not going to be as such that we are not going to gather up to want to move in as a fighting force. And I think that should explain, explain it. I want to thank you so very much. Any more? Well, that has been the Theater Commander Operation Lafia Dole, Major General Loki Irabo, giving an update on the ongoing military operation and other activities here uh, within the Northeast Theater of Operation. The chance to update Nigerians on what is going on in the fight against insurgency here in the Northeast. I'd like to thank you for. Uh, being here with us to be part of this um, live broadcast and right now I'd like to take you back to our headquarters for our regular programming. This has been a live channels television event.